Hello everyone, and welcome back to Kids Exploring East Asia with me, Chris. Together we're going on an exciting adventure, seeing the sights and meeting the people of this amazing part of the world. East Asia is a big place with billions of people, so let's get going. I hope you've got your hiking boots and jacket and backpacks ready, because today we're exploring some of the incredible landscapes that make up China's backyard. I'm sorry about the noise, it's pretty windy up here. Welcome to the staggering heights of the Himalayas, home to some of the highest mountain peaks in the world. The Himalayan mountain range is found between North India, Nepal and southern China. And it's here that you'll find Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain that reaches 29,032 feet, or 8,849 meters into the sky. That's nearly as high as aeroplanes fly when you travel on holiday. The Himalayas are also home to the majestic snow leopard, one of the most amazing big cats on our planet. These solitary predators are masters of camouflage. Their fur makes them incredibly hard to spot, helping them sneak up on their prey, such as the horned Himalayan blue sheep. During the winter, their fur is white, dotted with dark spots, helping them hide in the snowy cliffs. But in summer, they grow new fur that's more dusty brown, keeping them hidden as the snow melts. Snow leopards can make leaps of over 9 metres high and 15 metres long. Oh, we're climbing up these mountains. I sure wish I could spring like that. Fortunately, these fearsome predators have only ever been known to attack two people ever. So, despite being alone and miles from any help, I think I'm pretty safe. <sighs> on second thoughts, my hands are getting pretty cold. Let's move on. Now, on to the Gobi dessert. Mmm, I do love a good dessert. But hang on, I thought we were doing geography today, not food. Oh wait, that's a spelling mistake that Reuben didn't spot. I should have written Gobi Desert. Wow, one S can make all the difference. The Gobi Desert is in northern China and reaches over into Mongolia. If you hiked from north to south, you'd walk 500 miles and the desert is around a thousand miles across. Now, when you think of deserts, what do you picture? Sand. Yeah, the Gobi has plenty of that, piled into huge dunes that are famous for singing. I'm serious, they're called the singing sand dunes. Though, really it's more like a tuneful humming sound made as the wind blows the sand around. What else? Not much water. Yeah, like all deserts, the Gobi is very dry. Scorching heat, you say? Well, the Gobi is actually better known as a cold desert. Scorching cold, if that's a thing. The temperature can fall to minus 40, though it sometimes does reach 45 degrees in summer. Wow, so very cold, and at times, very hot. In fact, the temperature can change by as much as 35 degrees in a single day. Finally, surely a desert wouldn't be complete without camels. And yeah, you'll find the famous two-humped Bactrian camel here in the Gobi. Camels are amazingly well adapted for life in the desert, able to survive the heat and the cold. Their humps aren't giant water bottles, but they're actually stores of fat that they can use for energy when food and water are in short supply. It's little wonder that the amazing Bactrian camels have been used for centuries as the delivery vans for anyone wanting to carry things across the Gobi Desert. Well, the camels might be alright here, but all this time in the desert is making me thirsty. Welcome to the Yangtze 
River, the final stop on today's geographical tour of China. Flowing for nearly 4,000 miles, the Yangtze is the longest river in Asia and the third longest in the world, just behind the Amazon and the Nile. But, fun fact, the Yangtze River is the longest in the world to flow through only one country. It starts and ends in China. As with rivers all over the world, it has been an important source of water, transport and trade. And along the river, you'll find big cities such as Chongqing, Wuhan and Nanjing. Each of these cities was able to grow because of what the river gave them. As well as people living along its banks, you'll find the Yangtze is home to many amazing animals. Perhaps none of them quite as amazing as the giant Chinese salamander. Salamanders are amphibians, like frogs and toads and newts. In fact, if you've not seen one before, they do look a little bit like newts. But as the name of these suggests, not only do they live in China, but they're giant, reaching lengths of 1.8 metres or 6 feet. That's as long as I am tall. The famous Three Gorges Dam is also found on the Yangtze River. Completed in 2006, the dam is the world's largest hydroelectric power station. That's a fancy word that means that the dam can use the water that flows through it to generate electricity. While the Three Gorges Dam provides electricity and controls floods, it has also raised concerns over how it's dramatically changed the natural flow of the river and flooded the huge area behind the dam. I hope you've enjoyed exploring some of China's incredible geography as much as I have. As we've journeyed together, it's reminded me of what the Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans. In chapter 1, Paul writes, Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what he has made. My prayer is that the people of China see the amazing parts of creation their country is home to, and that they would want to find out more about the amazing creator God who made them. Will you join me in praying? That's all we've got time for today. But do join us next time for more Kids Exploring East Asia. And if you've got any questions you'd like to answer, or any places you'd like us to explore, do get in touch. You'll find out how in the description. Goodbye for now. 